Welcome to YNU 540, coming to you from the campus of Yokohama National University, here in Yokohama, Japan's second city. My name is Alec Macaulay. This is a broadcast for English language learners here in Japan and overseas. On the show, guests come in and talk about five photos that are important to them. Today I'm with Colleen from San Francisco, who's an exchange student here at Yokohama National University. Hello, Colleen. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you.、Uh, can you tell me about photo number one?、Uh, photo number one is a picture of me in Akihabara with、uh, two maids.、Uh, apparently, you have to、uh, pay money to take pictures with maids, and they, it's some sort of maid souvenir store. And I really didn't understand the process or why anyone would want to do it. Therefore, I decided it was absolutely necessary to take a picture of it and show it to everyone. Did you pay for this photo? Yes, I did. How much does it cost? I think it was like 300 yen. To get your photo taken with two maids? Yes. And that's all it is? You just go there,、that's, get your photo taken? That's it. But that's not the only service that they have. But if you ask to take a picture with them, then they, ask, they say that, that you, have to, you have to pay. Were there many customers there that day? Yes, and they were all men. You were the only woman. Only woman. Okay, thank you. Photo number two?、Uh, photo number two is a picture of me in Ginza at the Sony、um, uh, retail building. I don't know what the correct the showroom, I guess、okay. would be the word. And、um, I previously worked as an intern at、um, Sony Computer Entertainment of America in、mm -hmm. Foster City, which is just south of San Francisco. And so it was kind of a pilgrimage to see the Japanese. Arm of Sony, but、um, it was much more of a emphasis on consumer electronics than on video games, which is fine, and I was interested in that. But Japanese consumer electronics are so different than American consumer electronics. Really? In what in way? In the way that、uh, it's the same company, Sony in America, Sony in Japan, but if you walk into a Sony area in America, You'll see televisions and a PlayStation and a PSP. And、um, if you walk into Japan's, you see laptops with colors on them、mm -hmm. rather than you know, the lightest or the fastest laptop. Right.、Um, a lot of smaller TVs、mm -hmm. that are styled. Here in the picture, you'll see a pink accented television. Okay. That looks kind of like an iMac. And there's a heavy, heavy emphasis on digital cameras. Yeah. I think in Japan, camera and photography is very and popular. And there's not there's so much、um, popularity for digital cameras outside of Japan then?、Um, everyone I know in America that has a camera has a digital camera.、Mm -hmm. And most people own one, but they don't carry it with them everywhere. It's only for special occasions. Right. And people certainly don't buy as expensive cameras unless they're a professional or a very heavy enthusiast.、Mm. Okay, photo number three. What's this one about? Photo number three is a picture of the Ramen Museum in Yokohama.、Um, one thing that is consistent in these photos is that I'm more interested in modern culture in Japan and subcultures.、Mm. And one thing that I see in a lot of Japanese media, in film, and when I observe Japanese people is a fascination. Not a fascination, but a love for ramen、mm. as the、uh, generic food. It's kind of like hamburgers in America, but there's almost a,、uh, a passion for it. People、oh, the, the, the ramen boom has been going for years, and it's more like wine. I mean, people consider、yeah. themselves connoisseurs of exactly. ramen. Exactly.、Mm. It's not just like in America where it's like, I like hamburgers,、mm. and this is my favorite place. It's, they go, it's like wine where they have, you know, I like this place. Is, Broth, and I like this place's noodles, and、yeah. I like to get it in this style. And everyone specializes. And so, the ramen museum, you pay an entry fee, and then you go downstairs.、Uh, the, the, the first floor is a kind of poor attempt at some sort of a ramen history explanation,、right. but it's just a couple of pictures and nothing that great. And of course, they sell ramen materials so that you can you know, make them at home.、Mm. But if you go downstairs, there's about Um, probably seven or eight little ramen shops.、Mm. I guess they have, each of them has a you know, famous history, but it was difficult for me to read and understand each of them. Right. And、uh, you can either eat one large bowl of ramen or get multiple small ones. And、um, it's kind of in the style of old Japan. And I went with my tutor, again, who I love deeply. <laughs> and he,、uh, he was telling me that it really reminded him of his youth and what Japan looked like back then. Right. 
But one thing that made me very happy is that I found um, a little pub and I got a glass of Guinness. In so the ramen museum. In the ramen museum. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, and your final photo? Um, I have two more photos. Two more. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, I missed that one. The next photo is a picture of Godzilla in, uh, in the Ginza area. I'm not sure if it's still technically in Ginza. Holding a lighter that I bought at Denny's that is this, um, it's a crab um, claw. Oh, that's what he has in his hand. It's a crab claw lighter. Yes, okay. cigarette lighter. And when you pull the lever, the claw opens and a flame shoots out of it. Right. And I have a close friend who, um, he really likes this television commercial. It's for a Honda Element. Mm -hmm. And um, it's this really simple, strange crab character that walks up to um, the car and starts talking to the car. And the car speaks back. I haven't seen this commercial. It's a cartoon. And um, the crab, he doesn't really speak fluent English. All he says is, I pinch. And the car says, you know, you know, how are you doing today? And he's like, I pinch. I enjoy pinching. That's and it? So, that's it. But because it's so, that's it, mm. that, that is so confusing, it became a very funny commercial in that respect. You just right. don't understand it. So my friend's response to most everything is, I pinch. This is a commercial in Japan. In the United States. Ah, in the States, that's why. And uh, I never saw it, but it's on YouTube, and it's become kind of a cult phenomenon. Okay, I'm going to look so, for that. Yeah. And so uh, this lighter pinches. So, and I was in uh, Denny's, and I saw it, and I said, I must have it for him. So right. I bought it. Okay, and last photo? The last photograph is a picture that I saw, again, while walking around Ginza with my tutor. Mm -hmm. And it's of a advertisement for The Wedding Singer, Right. which uh, is a play now in Japan, I, apparently, from this. And the this was next to the Takarazuka Theater. Mm -hmm. And um, in America, The Wedding Singer is kind of a campy 1980s sarcastic um, uh, parody movie. Right. And it's not, it's not fine film. Mm -hmm. And when I think of theater, I think of, you know, theatrical a movie being turned into a theatrical production needs some sort of merit and following and uh, it needs to be good. <laughs> yeah. And this was kind of a fun movie, but it wasn't good by any means and it wasn't special and it wasn't... I don't think it was a particularly big hit in Japan either. No. And I, so I see all of these Japanese people dressed up as stereotypes of American people in the 1980s. Right. And it's kind of like imagining a doing Gone with the Wind with all Japanese actors. Was the American Wedding Singer also turned into a Broadway show? No. So this is a uniquely Japanese adaptation. So I saw adaptation. that and my jaw dropped because I, I was just so confused and it's, yeah. I, it's kind of like trying to turn downtown gake no whatever. <laughs> it's the the comedy duo in Japan on television. Mm. That yeah, yeah where all the jokes end in someone in severe pain, yeah. turning that into a Broadway show. <laughs> yeah, well, don't give downtown ideas. They might do it. Uh, this, I don't know anything about this. I'm going to go and check up on this now because you, you've intrigued me. Why is this being made into a musical in Japan? I have no idea. But the, I, the one reason I think it would be made into a musical is that the soundtrack is amazing. It's all of the best, most nostalgic music from the 1980s. I haven't actually seen the movie, so maybe I should check that out first. Yes. Okay, thanks very much. Welcome.